uh, we have with us uh, yes, Professor Sai Kumar. I request uh, Kamishwari to introduce her. Welcome to the second session for to, uh, today's afternoon. And the theme of this afternoon session is Best Practices in CSR. And the session will be chaired by our beloved Professor Emil Sai Kumar, sir. Professor Sai Kumar is a, was a, is a former Dean Academics at Institute of Public Enterprise. He served as the PGP Program Director for seven years and two years as Chairman That's Placement. Enough. I now request uh, Deepthi uh, Deep Chandra to present sir with a floral bouquet. Then I have Mr. Uh, Harendra Patel, Joint President, HR and Cluster Head of Hindalco, Aditya Birla Group. Then I have Mr. Jibitesh Rath, GM HRD NMDC Limited and Mr. P. Sham, AGM CSR NMDC Limited. Uh, we also have Mr. Sh Shri Aurobindo Sahu and Shri Amiya Sahu, Mah uh, Mahanandi Coal Limited. We also have Ms. Shri Ms. Bharati, Regional Head CSR, GMR Foundation. And we also have Ms. Rajni Sinha, State Head of Telangana and AP. I now hand over the session to Sai Kumar, sir. A very good afternoon. Without wasting much of your time, we have a wonderful presentations scheduled in this. And people with a lot of experience, they have come here. Let's learn directly from them. That's the first thing which we will do it. The first we have is uh, Mr. Arindra Patel, Hinalko. Let's listen to him first. So, good afternoon, uh, having a very uh, seasoned uh, CSR activities being done at uh, the various locations of the units and the business. I hail from Hindalgo Industries, uh, where we are also a pioneer into the CSR activities. Mean is based at the Gujarat. Gujarat, uh, there is the Baruch district where the west cross of Baruch, for 50 kilometers, the industrial base called the Hedge, which is located there. There we have set up our activity. We came there in 1995. It is a 2.7 billion organization having the single smelter copper smelting business. Now you know the Gujarat is a place where uh, infrastructure development is very fast compared to other states. So the needs which have been arised, so we have the uh, need assessment survey to start with that what is the basic requirement of the area where we should do our corporate social responsibilities which earlier was known as a corporate governance. So our social vision, uh, according to our uh, Madam Rajeshri Birla, to actively contribute to the social and economic development of the undeserved communities, lifting the burden of poverty and helping uh, bring in inclusive growth. In so doing, build a better sustainable way of life for the weaker section of society and raise the country's human development index. This has been drawn almost two decades before. Then we have drawn our own uh, social objective of the unit. We have our focus area on the education. As Mr. Raj likely said, that the health and education were the two. But why the education was? Because the belt where we are, it is the drought prone area. It is on the sea coast of the uh, area where education reached was very impossible aspect. It was quite away from the uh, main course or the main belt of the uh, infrastructure. That is how we said that okay, education should be one which has come af after the need assessment study which has come to us. Then the uh, sustainable livelihood infrastructure support and espousing social cause. These are the social changes which we thought part of our studies which has come up. The relevance of the project, the 69 villages of the Vagra Tehsil of Baruj district where we are located. The population is around 1,44 and the total household 21,590. 
So we were uh, having a baseline survey by TCS and then XISS and the MS University. This is how we work. We do a lot of activities based on the need of the people. The question which has been raised here or the intervention of the district collector or the uh, local politicians and the gram panchayat and all. But we do counsel the interference whenever it comes that the look, the need of the organization is under section 135 is X. The requirement of the villagers is re X and Y. So let us have together. Now have together it means they have you know their ears up. He said the hairs up. He said why together? Then we said fine. The government of Gujarat has 134 such projects for the people in need. Where our theory is that we need to reach to the end of the person, end of the society. So if that is a requirement, let us look at that. So finally we need to have a lot of counselling and conversation with them. Maybe at the Sankalan meeting which we call coordination meeting with the district collector. And there we uh, take up this project. We invite the local MLS, Panchayat and all. And then we sit together. I said fine, we want to do. Let us work out the priorities. So then we work out the priorities and we move ahead with the project. The youth is the one which is unemployed. They have no direction where to go, what to do. So we also ask people, the nearby industries, because the 3, 000, 3 lakh crore plus investment is coming in the Daesh, around 210 major industries are coming, like Reliance, GACL, GNAPC, Hindalco, and Opel, ONGC, such main. So we approach the HR fraternity to those industries that if you are coming up, this is what the, we have a study already done. So why can't you take a support from us or let us have a hand-in-hand -hand support so that these youth can be trained. So we initiate one very major thing, is the training people into industrial safety. They must know when they are going to work in an industry, they must know what is the basic industrial safety requirement so that the life is not at the stake. Then we said an ITI. We have sponsored two ITIs. One, the Jindal has come up. He said, sir, we want to uh, know what could be the requirement here. We said, okay, you go with an ITI here. So we supported them and we have started the Industrial Training Institute. We guided them. And there the youth have been incorporated for the training. Second, LNT came. LNT came. They said that, would you like to put the youth of this build into the machinery work development because we are coming with a lot of many projects in Gujarat. So we extended that. We help an other industry to resource mobilization from the our study and main point coming to this, our employee engagement, how we use the talent of our own people because we get the people from the various villages. So we had a very in-depth discussion with them, said, look, what are the priorities of your village? We uh, teach them what is the CSR, what should we should do, what company does it, are you aware? He said, no, yeah, our, some people from the CSR department come and they do something like this, this, this. So we made them the volunteers from the villages. So they have come up with the issues. So they counter like whether the requirement or the real need is X, which is represented by the panchayat or by the panchayat body or the local MLS or the influential people into the opinion makers. We had set up the gym. Now gym in the village is a new concept which the Hindalgo has brought in the government of Gujarat or the Gujarat itself. That the no village has a gym. We have made a very beautiful gym. At least the youth who is going to an industry have some kind of, you know, the rejuvenation process. This is how our project design and approach, need identification, planning, capacity building, resource mobilization, activity implementation. We do keep a record, monitoring and evaluation, review through impact survey, and that's our project operational process is there. 
इट्स अ वेरी रोबस्ट प्रोसेस अक्रॉस द हिंडालको एंड अक्रॉस द आदित्य बिरला ग्रुप सेफ डिलीवरी इम्यूनाइजेशन लॉ अवेयरनेस अबाउट यूजेस ऑफ लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड एनिमल हस्बेंड्री वी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग ऑन दीज एरियाज then we use this various components what it should be like for an education we said pre school education school education program educational support program vocational technical education school infrastructure as far as the health preventive health care curative health care programs reproductive and child health quality and support program health infrastructure sustainable livelihood agriculture and farm based animal husbandry based non farm and skill based income generation program natural resource conservation programs livelihood infrastructure and infrastructure some infrastructure development other than for the purpose of health education and livelihood so and the social development institutional building and the strengthening support to development organization social security awareness program social events to minimize causes of poverty promotion of heritage culture sports disaster relief program we and an old industry there or the oldest industry because we came first in 1995 so lot of expectations of the villages surrounding areas is there from the our company subsequently reliance joined us gujarat alkali joined us then the gnfc joined us then we made a forum and then we started looking at the larger issues one is a water we also started giving them the ro facilities and that is on the entrepreneur basis they themselves maintain it they themselves um, sell the water the river treated water which comes from the ro being used for the school gardening and all activities and the toilets oh uh, this is the uh, and the data which we have we have adopted 85 schools of the total wagra tehsil and we take care of the education material through our company employees volunteers we distribute in two days of time covering all 85 schools with those help of the our volunteers up to eighth standard the concept called pragya where the children does not have to carry the school bag and the material to home they do everything in the school and they finish it there they keep their bag there and they go home we also support the anganwadis where the you know the children below the 3 years they also are you know promoted or motivated to go to their uh, anganwadi we design develop assist this is also one of the government program so we work on a ppp model the government is also a party to it somewhere the teachers are being not available so initially we provide the teachers to them till the teachers are being paid from the government this is how we help the institute we provide the bus to the girl child so that you know safety is there so the parents feel they okay my child is safe to travel to 5 km 7 km because these schools are at a distant place in the geography we distribute bicycles to the girl child who completes his 10th standard so that she can move to another higher secondary school with the help of the two to three or four five girls together so that gives a confidence to the parents for about the safety and easy transportation we do give an adolescent health talk we at the birla have our own hospital so the doctors who are there are the employees they design the programs they go to the various schools and give a health talk to them we do carry health check up wherever the government is unable to do that we extend our support and carry periodical health check up we do provide a career counseling to the children who come to 8th standard 9th standard who are going to appear for the board exams and all this is the uh, our health care activity a report card sort of a thing uh, arogya is a hospital which belong to birla copper sir just 2 minutes more okay so there are various activities is being performed the sustainable livelihood 
this tailoring classes stitching training beauty parlor training self help group so the whatever they make we create an exhibition come sale for them to sell their final product and that is how the source of earning is being generated and we do the farmers training with the kind of soil testing and to what kind of crops can be <coughs> carried by them this is our uh, infrastructure support to the various villages building uh, school building renovation of the uh, school building making a gym for the youth making the new community center so the lot of activities can be done there in the event people say that we don't have such facility where do we do all these activities so we have provided this kind of facilities this is some example like we low cost housing also is a project which we have taken in the social reform we support sanitation fire fighting training basic safety training mass marriages women's day celebration rural sport competition the local festivals and cultural program and just some wallet floor distribution and all some educational tour support that's how we do for them we have fetched award into limca book of record by cleaning 14 km of area in baruch district having 14000 party volunteers and in 4 hours we have carried out our total birla copper employees and their families were together they we moved to 40 km from our workplace to the baruch and we have taken up this project these are the stakeholders i said that the government is also uh, the member into our activities and these are some awards and accolades which has been given to the birla copper this is the press release which has come from them that's it we can take a couple of quick questions there any yeah somebody is based on the need, uh, need assessment the work has been seen and how has the area wise been taken up or some projects wise uh, yeah project wise and area wise we share our uh, baseline survey report with them like suppose we have one iti which was to be built up now that investment was around 3 crore so that iti has been supported by one or two industries some infrastructure at the science lab has been supported by one industry So that is how two three projects have been carried out. And the villages are also adopted by uh, each industry. Yes, each industry has adopted the villages. So there is a coverage of the whole district. Is it like that? Okay, we are coverage of whole district. Tehsil. Tehsil. Okay. okay. Because the whole district, there are the four tehsils where prominently industries are there. Okay. If I just name it, the Dahej is one where we are there. The Wagra is another one. Okay. Uh, Vilayat. Jagadia, Ankleshwar. So these are the four uh, dominant area of the Baruch district where the industrialization has taking place. Okay. So is it something? I mean, I am a student of CSR. I am just asking some questions. So is it something like after a few years that the village will become self-sustainable? There will be all the youth will be employed, or there will be still some area of uh, improvement which would be required? Yes, yeah, some area of improvement will definitely be there because what the housewives will do. So we said that let us have a self-help group. because there are the uh, ladies who may not come out because having the social taboos so we have created some infrastructure whereby making of the papad you know the masala papad and some spices right. so which can be used as the you know, lagu gru udyog what we can say is small scale industry that can be done by them they make some uh, you know uh, artistic uh, jhulas swings hmm. made of the cottons and all Okay. so we have set up an uh, demonstration and the selling marketing okay. so once they make it we help them because that rent and all we uh, bear it we took it to the baruch or the main uh, district place and then the exhibition come sale is being organized and then they make a profit out of this so in thank you very much
uh, respected uh, the chairman of the session and uh, my co-presenter uh, Mr. Sham, DGM CSR, and our head of CSR sitting Mr. Patnaik, and uh, three project CSR in charge are here. So uh, that shows that uh, we take this conference very uh, seriously. Only in the introductory point, uh, because time is short, was in the morning session they told that in our vision statement uh, CSR is there. Very few PSU, Navratana company, uh, to around 12,000 crore on our company with uh, huge profit and CSR activity. Uh, social development is our vision, apart from quality of uh, ore, iron, mining and steel. Second, uh, you must, uh, what will present uh, the background, he may not be able to tell time constraint, I will tell we are working in an area where the uh, 16 people per square kilometer density of population. In Bihar it is uh, 20,000. And Bastar is bigger than uh, Kerala state, area-wise. Our mines also in Bellari, Karnataka, other places in Karnataka. But the point I want to drive that uh, where the longevity is 65 in India, they are the average longevity is 43. A girl becomes mother at the age of 13, becomes grandmother at 29, fed away at 42. This is the scenario. There you work. Socioeconomic profile, same any political profile also. It's a very disturbed area and we are there because of CSR. You understand the statement. We are there because of CSR. That you will tell in detail. But at the end of my, on the question answer, we will answer. But uh, one thing which I hinted in the morning session, uh, we are in all hurry to satisfy ourselves. Uh, we are hungry. <laughs> so that uh, community employee, one point, Dr. Rath has mentioned out of 10 main points, one is internalizing CSR. That is, employees should participate in CSR. Our employees participate in CSR. They give their time. Not only they, their family also participate in CSR activity. Sometimes, if required. But this is the situation because we live there with the society. So society is the stakeholder is more important than our mining operation or our business. That's the background. Uh, and uh, our, uh, a lot of things he will tell. With this, I request Sam to make a presentation so that the perspective will be more clear. Hello to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Patnaik Saab, the head of CSI department, for encouraging me and pushing me to do this presentation. NMDC, my company, is the only company under the PSU fold whose specific CSR model has been upheld and also recommended for emulation by all the CPSCs across the country. Madhukar Sahib is not here. He was there in the morning. I will detail about this aspect in the future slides. Let me start the presentation. The foremost distinct feature of our CSR has been that we believed in CSR from day one, what uh, Dr. A.K. Ratsa was saying. And we invested in CSR even when we were not making profits. We started our operations in 1960s, but as a matter of fact, we started making steady profits only in the, from the year 1989-90. By which time, we had already invested more than 2% of our cumulative profits of that day. Today we are speaking about this 2% and Dr. Ekerat was saying that average 1.4%. We did that 25 years back. In the initial times, uh, we used to take up random initiatives. Slowly we started structuring around certain uh, fixed uh, focus areas. And we involved all the stakeholders in our CSR from day one. I will uh, detail about the stakeholder consultation mechanism in the coming slides. This is the co comprehensive stakeholder consultation mechanism that has been adopted by us, evolved over a period of years. We conduct uh, meetings with sarpanches and community representatives from surrounding villages and uh, we jot down all the needs and the 
shortlisted uh, needs, we take it to the district collectors for discussion to avoid duplication. Then, in order to dovetail our plans with the divisional plans and the state plans, we also have discussions with the divisional commissioner in the presence of uh, all the seven district collectors of a uh, Bassa division. Then, we also have discussions with the chief secretary once in a year. We also take suggestions from the Bassar and Southern Regional Development Authority, the chairman of which is the Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh himself. And taking inputs from all these forums, we prepare the list of developmental activities which we call as the annual CSR budget for a particular year. This is the office order through which the Department of Public Enterprises, Government of India, has recommended our model of stakeholder consultation mechanism to be emulated by all the CPSCs across the country. DPE, Department of Public Enterprises. These are the focus areas. All the proposals are involved through the, evolved through the consultation mechanism and uh, all the proposals are examined by the board level CSR committee. We call it CSR and Sustainability Committee. Then the recommendations of the CSR and Sustainability Committee are approved by the board. These are the three modes through which we implement our CSR. Directly by the company, departmentally we do it. One of the major initiatives that we do it directly is Siksha Sayog Yojana. I'll detail about it in the later slides. And some of the activities we do through volunteer organizations, NGOs. And we also take a major portion of our activities in partnership with uh, state and district authorities. This is the organizational setup. We have dedicated teams at all the projects. As uh, Ratsa was saying, that we uh, have our uh, CSR heads of different projects have also come here. And we have a team at head office, Hyderabad, to, for overall coordination. This is a glimpse of our uh, CSR allocation and uh, expenditure over the years. Quantum jumps both in allocation as well as expenditure. And uh, Dr. Ekeritsa was uh, in the morning, he was saying, uh, uh, showing the data up to 2013-14. In the year 2015-16, the study conducted by Ministry of Corporate Affairs places that at the seventh position in the total CSR of the country, among private sector also. These are some, I will uh, showcase some of our major CSR initiatives. We have a scholarship scheme, we call it NMDC Siksha Sahiyog Yojana. It caters to 18,000 students per year. Correct me if I am wrong, this is the biggest single CSR initiative undertaken by any company in the country. And uh, the distinct feature of this is that the amount, scholarship amount directly goes into the bank, bank and post office accounts. This humongous job was undertaken by Dr. Gypsy Sarak when he was in charge at uh, the uh, Baladilla project. We also have one uh, scholar, uh, the sponsorship scheme for uh, sponsoring uh, tribal girls into nursing colleges. Balika Siksha Yojana we call it. We bring 40 tribal girls every year and for uh, nursing courses here at Apollo School and College of Nursing. We provide uh, coaching in both uh, general nursing as well as BSc nursing. Then we have a residential school at uh, Nagarnar, our upcoming steel plant uh, location. The distinct feature of this school is that most of the students studying in this school are first generation school goers from their families. Volunteering was being discussed in the morning. Our own employees, both male and female, go deep into the jungle hamlets, counsel the parents, and bring those first generation school going children to our school, this residential school, and everything is provided in the uh, residential capacity. And we also have to bring the technical education to the deep jungles of uh, Bastar. We have established one polytechnic and two ITIs. And uh, again, the specific features of these technical institutes is that these are the only three technical institutes in whole of Chhattisgarh which are totally funded by a company without taking any financial assistance from the government of Chhattisgarh Department of Technology Education.
And uh, this is one of the major initiatives that we have taken up in the last couple of years. We have established an island of educational facilities in the deep jungles of Dantewada. We have established a residential school that caters to 1,200 students, Asta Gurukul we call it. And that campus also has two 1,000 seater hostels, one for boys, one for girls. And this Saksham residential school, let me tell you something about this. This residential school for differently able children caters to all the four kinds of disabilities, hearing impaired, visually impaired, physically disabled, and mentally retarded. And this is the only facility, mark my words, this is the only facility in India as on date, which is 100% disability friendly, with, which is catering to all the four kinds of disabilities. And uh, this facility also has teacher training institute and polytechnic. Let me cap it by saying that this is the only CSR initiative which has been visited by the Honorable Prime Minister in the last two years. This is the entrance gate where credit is given for partnering. These are some of the photographs of uh, Balika Siksha Yojana, Polytechnic and ITI. This is the residential school, temporary building. This is the Saksham 2, Asta Gurukul, top left then two hostels. This is a glimpse of a photograph of Prime Minister Modi ji interacting with the students of Education City in the 1,000 seater auditorium. I don't think even in Hyderabad there is a school which has 1,000 seating capacity. We have built that in Tantewada. Prime Minister is uh, seen uh, interacting with hearing impaired children. A good photograph with the, hearing, uh, with the uh, disabled children. Hearing impaired children, when they clap, they show like this. They are clapping for Modi ji. The chief minister of Chhattisgarh also is seen. Apart from education, we also do CSR activity in the health fold. We uh, provide almost treatment in the outpatient for 1 lakh uh, patients. We also run hospital on wheels, mobile medical vans. We have contributed for uh, medical college. That's the medical college which has been established at Jagdalpur. Some other photographs. This is one of the flagship initiatives of uh, NMDC. We had uh, conducted a study in the surrounding areas. In, uh, in a radius of 10 kilometers, there are 58 villages. Because of the natural situation that is uh, prevalent there, we could not conduct study in 13 villages. And presently, we are working in 18 villages. The canvas is wide. We provide agriculture support, scientific farm techniques we teach them, watershed structures we construct, irrigation facilities we construct, vegetable horticulture we help them, income generation training we provide them and also provide them financial support. We also provide uh, educational uh, supplementing teachers and all in the uh, schools and also provide nutritious food in the Anganwadis. These are some of the photographs. In the infrastructure fold, uh, in the recent uh, last two years we had built a huge road, almost 20 kilometers for bypassing Jagdalpur and for providing safety and uh, reducing pollution and also Gaurav for 6 lemonade. And also we have built so many uh, tribal art bazaars in Dantewad. That's it, sir. Thank you. There are many different sectors uh, in which you can make CSI investments, right? So you have uh, invested in education. What are some of the factors that you consider what choosing your sector for CSI education? To tell you uh, two uh, parameters on which we are selected, the dropout rate in Dantewada is 50%. It's 10 students if they are joining in class 1. By the time, after 5 years, they are reaching class 5. Only 50% are there. 50% is the dropout rate. And the reading writing skills is a class 5 boy of Hyderabad what is expected to have is not in, not in class one boy in either bar, what is expected to have reading writing skills that is not even existence for a class four boy in the class than the world. That kind of uh, gap is there, so we wanted to bridge that and we have taken off. Do you think education is the most pressing problem in that particular context? I'll uh, just uh, more, uh, I, no, sir, I would like to answer it with the two sentences. I had interacted with one of the uh, collectors, uh, the previous collectors in the world. I said, for creating social disturbance, you can get money from somewhere else. 
and also ammunition and uh, arms from somewhere else. But people will require from the road. And if they are diverting to uh, aggressive ways, society is fine. So we need to provide education and provide income generation opportunities so that society is better. Thank you. Before the act came in 13, when did the guidelines of the guidelines? Before that, there was no guidelines. Yes. But I know the director, former director of the company. I know, and it is always the forefront of the. Uh, exactly, exactly. 2005 to 6, I remember. We set up the medical college and all that. Yes. Without any law, without any GP guidelines. What is the additional? of the guidelines, how oh, we had a law. How is the law, what is, what is the meaning of the law? Because you are so much close to the stakeholders, you have to do CSA. No choice. So what is the law? Why? Any, any difference? For a company like NMTC, it doesn't make a difference. Yes. 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 Thank you, thank you. We want to disturb the speaker of Mr. Arvind Sahu, CSR Manani Konsi. Sorry, rushing the time is constant. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, very good afternoon to all of you. From Mahanadi Coal Field Limited, it is one of the subsidiary of Coal India Limited. So we have a video actually of uh, seven to eight minutes, I think. So we'll play it first. Then uh, I have a small PPT. Thank you. Limited was born on 3rd April 1992 in the land of Lord Jagannath, Orissa, as a new hope for many eyes looking for opportunities to grow and shine. A guardian of nation's energy security, MCL has left no stone unturned to share smiles with the people in its surroundings. As a part of corporate social responsibility, MCL has been spending more than 100 crores per annum in its adjoining area where our mines are working. In its effort to uplift the socio-economic status of its communities, MCL has gone beyond providing basic amenities of life to ensure overall development and prosperity to the people by building better infrastructure in otherwise rural coal field areas. Major focus of MCL is going to be also on building up toilets in all the schools. In year 2014-15. More than 75% of MCL's total annual expenditure under CSR was on the rural infrastructure development. Water scarcity has remained a major household problem in the state of Orissa, particularly in the coal-rich Talcher Belt. But MCL has made sure that every household in the area gets enough water supplies. The company spends around 4 crore rupees for water distribution among peripheral households during summers. This distribution by water tankers is also monitored through GPS. The company has also launched specially developed piped water schemes to mitigate water problem in Talcher coal fields at a cost of about 100 crore rupees. MCL 
has also funded water distribution schemes for peripheral towns of Brajrajnagar and Burla at the cost of 8 crore each. MCL understands the need of the farmers. Particularly during the peak summers, farmers of peripheral villages get supply for irrigation from water harvested in old coal mines like Gandhi Sagar in Tarcher, as well as from the check dams constructed by the company on various rivers in Jharsugda and Sundargad districts. During calamities, whether natural or man-made, MCL has always been there on the forefront to help the victims. Odisha is known for its rich culture and traditions. And MCL is playing its role in preserving the same by encouraging the generation next by conducting various cultural programs for its communities. Besides providing healthcare facilities to peripheral people at its hospitals, as well as at their doorsteps through clinic on wheels. MCL has also funded for the state-of-the-art medical facilities and infrastructure in the government institutions and hospitals. The company has also provided a fleet of 10 fully equipped ambulances to the Orissa government to reach out to rural population during medical emergencies. Besides assisting state government during healthcare emergencies, it also organizes regular free medical camps in the remote villages of its mine areas. MCL also conducts awareness programs to educate people about health and hygiene to check epidemics like jaundice and dengue. Supplementing the efforts of the company, wives of MCL employees under an umbrella body Jagriti Mahila Mandal is also playing an important role in upliftment of the society, particularly the needy and the underprivileged segments. For the development of the society, we have made four projects. Tigyasa Pariyojana, which is the tuition classes, is being taught by the tuition classes. Our Pariyojana, which is the free medical camps, and we give them the treatment. समर्पण परियोजना जिसके अंतर्गत उन्हें आवश्यक वस्तुएं दी जाती हैं और हमारी स्वावलंबन परियोजना जिसके अंतर्गत हम उन्हें आत्मनिर्भर बनाने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं महिला मंडल ऑफ एम सी एल है टू इंस्पायरिंग प्रोग्राम नेम्ड प्रोजेक्ट लाभली for grooming teenaged girls belonging to poor peripheral families and Project Nonihar for helping in development of motherless children below age 3. MCL is putting in a lot of efforts to spread literacy in the society, particularly among women. The company has provided computers, books, constructed hostels and other infrastructures in the educational and professional training institutions to ensure better facilities in Orissa. These rural girls from peripheral areas in Jharsugda district now have more time to study after helping their mothers in household chores. The company has been keen to encourage the sporting talent from Orissa to represent India. Little Chess Wizard, Saina Salonika, Karateka, Valena Valentina, Windsurfer, Manaswini Maharana, Sprinter, Anya Malik, and Guinness World Record holder, Keshav Swine are the few names MCL has supported to excel in their respective sports. MCL is playing a major role in popularizing national sport hockey. It is the first central public sector undertaking to own a Hockey India League team, Kalinga Lancers, by sponsoring Champions Trophy Men's Hockey Tournament that had all the matches played on home turf at Bhubaneswar, MCL has kindled a new fire among youths of Orissa to take up national sport. MCL is a corporate growing with the growth of its surroundings and achieving new milestones of success every year.
OCL, a socially responsible coal company, is playing a key role in development of Orissa. Thank you so much. I have a small PPT. Just I will talk about the statistic part. Uh, as you know, uh, we basically we are based in Odisha. We are uh, operating in four districts, uh, Sambalpur, uh, Jharsugoda, and uh, Angul and uh, uh, Sundargarh. So uh, we are based in uh, those uh, four districts. Uh, we have a board, then uh, we have a CSR uh, committee, which is uh, uh, CSR and uh, SD committee, CSR and Sustainable Development Committee, that is subboard level, which is called CSR committee. Then we have uh, headquarter committee, and in different uh, uh, areas we have also subcommittees. So this is the uh, last five years uh, uh, expenditure on CSR. Uh, last year in 2015-16, uh, we we have spent uh, 184 crores. Uh, in the, in the state of Odisha, in the CSR, uh, in 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 the toilet, uh, in such uh, such Vidyalaya campaign, we spent uh, 240 crores. We constructed 10,546 toilets uh, across uh, 14 districts in Odisha. So that was our mega project. Uh, this year we have a budget around uh, 113 crores uh, we will be spending in all the sectors health, education, sanitation, uh, uh, rural development. Some of the major uh, CSR activities, there are some clips as I have already covered in the video I think. We have a, this is a, a mega project in uh, Angul, uh, we are uh, constructing a medical college and hospitals of 492 crores. So for the periphery, uh, for the development of the uh, uh, periphery people, for the health of the per, uh, periphery people. So this is our mega project. Uh, it is, it will be, uh, it will be functioning within I think two years. So we are also spending a lot of money on road uh, infrastructure development. Okay, thank you so much. I think I have covered most of the things in the video. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One question. No more two questions. Yeah. How can you ensure water supply in the toilets which has been built in the schools and other places? Because in absence of water supply, the building is of no use. Basically, we will get the help of the district administration. I mean, uh, during the time of uh, you know, construction also, we also uh, took the help of DC administration. The DC administration, you know, they will uh, uh, give the, you know, how much money they want, uh, you know, for supplying the water to the toilets and all these things. So accordingly, we take the approval of board and uh, we deposit money to DC administration and DC administration, uh, you know, take care of it. Fine, thank you. This we can take offline, I'm sorry. And I don't need mine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's move to the next presenter, Ms. Bharti from GMR Group. She is going to present on women empowerment. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I represent GMR Varalakshmi Foundation, which is the corporate social responsibility arm of GMR Group of companies. And uh, I don't think I need to introduce about GMR Group. Most of you are aware of it. it uh, it's the major infrastructure developer, which operates our Hyderabad and uh, Delhi airports. And we are soon, go soon going to build uh, a, a world-class airport at Kova also. And uh, GMR Group is also into power sector. Uh, we have uh, 
nine operational power plants and uh, five projects under uh, under op uh, start, uh, going to start soon. And uh, we are also into highways development. Seven uh, uh, operational highways are under GMR Group's portfolio. And uh, two special economic jo zones are also under this infrastructure portfolio of the group. And GMR Varalakshmi Foundation is the CSR unit of the group, which operates wherever GMR Group has a business operation or a presence. Uh, uh, GMR Varalakshmi Foundation, as I said, it's a CSR arm. It's registered as a Section 25 company. I think straight away you can go to the activity and talk yes. about it. This I'm sure people are aware uh, of it. It, is, it has a separate board chair, chaired by our group chairman, Mr. G.M. Rao, and the group's vision is to make, sorry, for Lakshmi Foundation's vision is to make sustainable impact on the human development through initiatives in education, health, and livelihoods. And basically, our Varalakshmi Foundation is organized into three wings, education, health, and community services wing. Most of our educational wing activities are uh, concentrated in uh, Rajam, our group chairman's native place, uh, Srikakulam district of Andhra Pradesh. We have an engineering college, degree, and beard college set up in this uh, area. And also, we run four uh, subsidized English medium schools. And we also set up a business school in partnership with uh, Shulik Ark University, Canada, in Hyderabad, in the airport campus. And under healthcare wing, we are running a 135 bed multi speciality hospital again in Rajam, Andhra Pradesh. And we also facilitated setting up a 30 bed hospital in Orissa, where we have a power plant. Uh, and uh, the community services wing, the third wing, uh, it operates across India wherever the GMR group has business operations. And this is the kind of spread we have in different states. And these are the educational institutions that I talked about. And this is the hospital that we run in uh, Andhra Pradesh. And when it comes to community service wing, again, community service wing works in uh, three, three areas, that is education, health, and livelihoods. Under education, what we do is, wherever uh, our GMR Varalakshmi Foundation has a presence, we adopt the government schools in that area, and we try to improve the quality of education in the schools. Our focus is more on educational quality improvement rather than on infrastructure development in the schools. But if there is a lack of basic infrastructure in the schools, we do provide that, but our focus is more on uh, quality of education. And uh, we do that through Vidya volunteer support, running after school centers, uh, after school tuition centers, and uh, through introduction of innovative teaching methodologies, provision of computer education, and all that. And we also support government anganwadis, and wherever there are no anganwadis, we run our own balabadis, which function like anganwadis in those areas. And we are also running tent schools, especially in Bangalore, in the migrant labor settlements, so that uh, we help the migrant labor children. Uh, they do not miss the school. We try to bridge their uh, education, uh, whatever education that they miss by migrating to the city. And we also provide a lot of educational scholarships and loans for the students who want to pursue higher education. And we are also running uh, computer-enabled learning centers in the government schools in partnership with IBM. And under uh, the next uh, thrust area of health, we run mobile medical units for aged uh, in seven of our locations. And we are also running two ambulances and 28 free medical clinics. And we do conduct a lot of school health checkups and a uh, lot of health awareness programs and health camps, etc. And we also focus more on sanitation. We have constructed 27 public toilets in Hyderabad and in Rajam and in other, other locations. And uh, we also help the communities, rural communities especially, to construct the individual uh, lavatories. And uh, one of our major uh, focus area is the livelihood enhancement of youth, especially underprivileged dropout youth. We run 11 vocational training institutes in different uh, areas. Most of them are residential. 
We train about 5,500 youth every year in our centers. And we also support rural families for non-farm and non-farm livelihood income enhancement. And these are the some of the words that we got. And another focus area of our activities is women empowerment. And for empowerment of women and girls, what we do is we focus a lot on the education uh, of uh, girl children. And we have a scheme called Gifted Children Scheme through which we sponsor underprivileged meritorious students to our schools, the schools that we run, uh, the CBSE English medium schools, and their complete educational expenses are borne by our foundation. And we are supporting around uh, 120 girl children through uh, the Gifted Children program. And we also provide a lot of uh, transport facilities and other facilities, for the girl, especially for the girl children, to enable them to attend the schools in, in the areas where the transport facilities are absent. And uh, another area that, that we work is uh, women self-help groups. We promoted uh, more than 300 women self-help groups in different areas. And we encourage the women self-help groups uh, to uh, produce a lot of uh, products. Uh, we provide them the skill trainings, required skill trainings, and we provide them the capital, uh, and we also provide them the space for the production and all. And uh, the, m most of our group, women groups, are producing a lot of eco-friendly products, especially jute and cloth-based products. And we market them through our own initiative called Empower, enabling marketing of uh, products of women entrepreneurs. And this is how our Empower initiative has evolved. We initially trained few women in tailoring, and then uh, we trained them in advanced uh, jute and uh, paper products training. And uh, we have set up shops in our uh, airports in uh, Hyderabad and Delhi. We have two uh, shops in Hyderabad airport and one shop at uh, Delhi airport. And through these shops, we uh, try to market these products made by our own women groups. And also, we procure uh, products from other artisans groups and other uh, products from other NGOs. And we market them also through our shops. And other marketing channels of our, show, our uh, products include the bulk orders. We do take up uh, bulk orders uh, from different corporates and for conferences and seminars we make products. And we also set up stalls in uh, corporates and uh, uh, exhibitions and uh, stall. we set up the stalls. <coughs> And we do have an online store, empowershop.org. And we also recently tied up with Flipkart, Amazon, and Snapdeal, and other uh, e-retailers. And our products are also there on their sites. So these are the some of the products that our women groups are making. And we are also procuring, as I said, products from other artisan groups and NGOs. These products are marketed under our Empower initiative. And these are the marketing channels. These are the shops of our in our airports. And we, as I said, we do take up bulk orders from, from the corporates, different corporates. These are some of our corporate partners. And we also have an uh, online store. And our empower is uh, showing 100% uh, year-on-year growth. And uh, we are able to ensure each woman earns 6,000 to 8,000 uh, every month, a minimum of 6,000 to 8,000 through this initiative. And about 100 women are directly involved and three, 350 other artisans we are supporting. And uh, these are the uh, strengths that we feel for the success of this Empower initiative. We are able to leverage our corporate connect connections and we are, uh, through that we are able to set up stalls in uh, shops in airports and we are also able to procure, get bulk orders through our corporate connections. And we have also a committed professional team and also committed leadership. These, uh, these are the factors that helped for the success of this initiative. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any quick question, one question.
Thank you. Thank you.